Hi everyone, today we're going to do a quick tutorial on how to connect FastGen with Superbase. More specifically, we are interested in reading uh, data within our Superbase DB using API endpoints and sending HTTP requests. We also want to make changes to that database by inserting roles. Um, and lastly, we're going to connect uh, Superbase uh, within the FastGen platform to access data through SQL. So let's get into it. Um, right here, we are in the table editor of Superbase and we are looking at um, a database of dogs. We do see their names um, and their breed and we are interested in accessing that data. So we're going to hop to the API builder in FastGen and we're going to add a route. Um, we're going to do a get request here. I'm going to call this uh, read Superbase and change this to read SB. Authentication, we're going to turn this into a public endpoint for now. So second step, we're going to use an HTTP request. We need two things. We need the request URL and we need the authentication to access the data. So we hop back to Superbase and here in the top right, you see API and you're going to press that. Superbase is here providing us with some information on how to access the data within that table. We're going to select bash um, and going to scroll down. What we're interested in is reading rows, and we're going to do read specific columns. Uh, we will read name and breed. In this example, name and breed are the only two columns available, but we could just pretend that there would also be age, location, hair color, whatever. So this is the request URL. I'm going to copy it and paste it over here in FastGen. I'm going to call this action read SB. Um, it is a GET request. Now we need the authentication for it. Um, here on the top right, uh, we currently uh, hide the API key, but you can select service role and then it's going to provide you with the API key here. So I'm going to copy paste the API key. In a first step and I'm going to put it in the header API key and this, and we're also going to copy paste the bearer token which I think is actually the same in this example, but we're gonna copy paste it nonetheless. Save this. Um, before we save this, at the end here in this request, you see select and then some column and other column. We're gonna delete that. Oops. We're gonna delete that and um, put name and breed. Yeah. Uh, let's see if this saved, it did. We're gonna um, put name and breed as we're interested in those two data points. I'm going to save um, then at the end we're going to put success save this and now we're ready to deploy the endpoint and we can send a first test request to see if everything worked out so everything's green so the request went through let's have a look at the output of that http request and here we can see all of the breeds and names of the docs in our table right here so this is great. Um, we could now do with that data whatever we want. We could send it somewhere. We could display it in a front end. Um, we could try to access single data points. Maybe just do, let's just do that in one example. So in here I could say output and then I say um, uh, steps. And this is pretty much the output. We are trying to access the output of that HTTP request and we say outputs dot body um, dot zero dot breed. I'm going to save this and deploy it. And if we now send a second request, uh, that success should show us the breed of the first dog in this table, which is um, what steps read as the outputs body zero breed is uh, showing. Okay, so this is how we're accessing data. Lots of different things we could do here. We can read all rows, we can read specific rows, um, and then within FastGen we can do different things with these uh, data things. So um, let's hop uh, into the API builder and let's try to add a dog to this table. I'm gonna put add route and I'm gonna put a post endpoint and we're gonna call it insert superbase. And here we're gonna say insert uh, DB, uh, SB and authentication we're also going to turn into public endpoint. 
So we're gonna do an HTTP request again. Now we're pretty much doing the same thing again. Um, we're gonna scroll down and what we're interested in is inserting rows. And right here we see insert a row. You can also insert many rows, but we just want to insert one dog for now. So we're gonna copy paste the request URL again. Um, it's pretty much the same as before insert SB, but without the select at the end. Here it's gonna be a post request, that's important. So gonna post this. Um, then we're gonna configure the request um, by setting our um, authentication. Once again, copy pasting the API key um, and copy pasting our bearer token. All right, and we're gonna save the changes and save. Um, what we have to do in this HTTP request is now within the JSON uh, uh, content, we have to specify on what should be uh, added. So we're gonna add some JSON here and we're gonna add a name. And the name is gonna be whatever we send to this request. So we're gonna put inputs.body.name and we're gonna say breed and this is inputs.body uh, .breed, um, like this. Um, then we're gonna save this and save that. We're gonna put a success message at the end. We're gonna call it success. And now we will deploy this endpoint as well. So let's hop into the debug mode and try to add a dog. So we could say name is um, Sophie and breed is Husky. And now we're gonna send the test request. Um, everything's green, everything went through, this is great. Let's see, um, status code looks good. Um, let's look into our super base and we just saw how Sophie Husky was added. And um, once again, what we did is we sent a post request um, to super base and in here we say um, the name is whatever we sent to this request and the breed is also what we're gonna send it to. And we send it through the debug mode, but you could build a front end and whenever uh, a user is submitting their dog um, and their breed could be sent to this request and you add it then to the database right here. So this is one way of accessing and changing data within your Superbase database. There is a second way. These are not mutually exclusive, by the way. Um, I'm gonna hop into a different project for that. I'm gonna uh, go to Puzzles SB. And what we're gonna do now is that we really connect the database of Superbase here. So we can utilize the DB query action. Um, in this, uh, um, um, in this project that we just used for utilizing the HTTP request, we have our own database. So this is not connected to Superbase directly. So if we would build an API, yeah, um, and we would utilize the DB query action, we couldn't write SQL to make changes to this. So this is what we're gonna do now in our third example, where we will hop to project settings, and then we go to external database, and now we really want to connect Superbase to the uh, FastGen project. Um, so we're gonna hop back to Superbase because we need the credentials. Um, we will go to project settings and then we go to database. Um, and right here, connection info, um, it will already provide us with everything that we need. We will copy. Um, what did we just copy? We copied the host. So host is right this. Database name is Postgres. Um, User is also Postgres, and this is the port. Port is this, username is that. And password, I'm just gonna generate a new one. Hit this, generate new password, gonna copy it. Gonna enter it right here. Okay, now I will hit save. It failed to connect, interesting. Mm, so let's do some live debugging together. Um, reset password, okay. Oh, I had to update the password first, okay. So now it should work if I try it again. Wonderful, perfect. So, 
saved successfully. So now Superbase is connected to our FastGen project. Um, we are not able currently to display the Superbase database here. So if you try to press it, it will tell you cannot view table, but we can make changes to it and we can get the data out of it. So uh, let's build another API and we're gonna call it um, create and we're gonna call it insert Superbase 2. Yeah, and here we're gonna say insert SB2. Gonna turn to public route, save it. And now um, we are gonna use the DB query action and not the HTTP request. And in here, we can now write SQL to also insert a dog. And we're just gonna test that. I'm gonna call it insert dog. Um, and now we can configure the query. And um, we will say insert into um, puzzles. This is the name of our um, database right here, puzzles. Um, so insert into puzzles and we're gonna change name and breed or we're gonna add name and breed. And the values um, are gonna be whatever we send to this request now, it's gonna be inputs.body.name and it will be inputs.body.breed. Okay, so let's save the changes. Save this. I'm gonna put a success message at the end again. And now we're gonna deploy the endpoint. So now we will, through the debug mode, once again, send a test request. And now we need a name, let's call it uh, Sarah. Oops, we're gonna say name, and it's gonna, call, it's gonna be called uh, Sarah. And Sarah is, um, what is a good breed? Rottweiler, very nice to hawks. Um, Rottweiler. Okay, let's send this test request and let's see what happens. So, went through, went through. Um, one way to find out is to go to puzzles right here. And as we can see, Sarah was now added to the database. Um, those are the two ways of interacting with a Superbase database. In summary, you can build API endpoints using the HTTP request action. Um, or you connect your Superbase um, database to the FastGen project in order to be able to utilize queries. Um, both ways are totally functional. Um, depending on what you want to do, one might be more comfortable than the other. But yeah, I hope this is helpful. Superbase is an amazing product and an amazing team. I think FastGen and Superbase have lots of synergies. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, reach out and let us know and um, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.